Let's start off with our stories in Nigeria, where we understand that three more commissioners have resigned from the cabinet of Sim Fubara, governor of River State. Now, Gift Wolu, commissioner for housing, Jacobson Nbina, that's commissioner for transport, and Austin Ben Chioma, commissioner for environment, tendered their resignations on Friday. The development means that nine commissioners have resigned from Fubara's cabinet within 48 hours amidst the political crisis in the state. Now, joining me to unpack all of this is Mary Oguiji, human rights activist and lawyer from Abuja, Nigeria, and also Barista Okoi Obono Obla, that's APC chieftain, uh, former chairman, defunct uh, special presidential investigation panel. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Thank you. Now, I would, uh, of course, start off with you, Obono Obla. Uh, I mean, a lot is happening right now in uh, River State in 78, well, I say yes, about 78 hours. I mean, we've seen uh, defections to uh, the demolition of the state house. Now we are seeing commissioners uh, switch gears in terms of uh, loyalty. Uh, what do you make of all of this uh, recent happenings in River State? Well, um, it is part of uh, the learning process of um, uh, our democracy. Uh, our democracy is nascent uh, just about 24 years old uh, when the military returned to the bar barracks. So we are still learning. And these are all the uh, uh, challenges uh, we have to you know, contend with as we continue to learn as our, our, our democracy is evolving. So I don't see anything wrong with all what is happening in river states. Um, it is normal in a democracy to have all those things, all those mano, mano barring, you know, so mano barring, you know, disagreements, uh, and so forth and so on. It, uh, it is part of the learning curve. Even in established uh, democracy, say, in, like in the UK, in America, in India, you see all this, um, you know, tension, you know, uh, you know, sometimes. So we are learning. We will get there. Uh, as long as um, people don't take loss into their hands, um, all the disputes, uh, you know, that cannot be resolved should be taken to the courts. Mm -hmm. That is why we have the judiciary. The judiciary will look into all the issues and then uh, give a ruling that will help us, that will guide us in our subsequent behaviors. I, I just hope that our political actors are learning because some of these issues have cropped up some time ago, for instance, uh, four members of the River State of Assembly, uh, how can they sit and declare the seats of 27 members vacant? We saw that in Darien, who was governor of Plateau State, um, in 2006, when uh, the Plateau State of Assembly is made up of 24 members, 14 defected, and the remaining 10 sat down to purportedly remove the revenue from office. And the matter went all the way from the High Court to the Court of Appeal uh, and the Supreme Court, and ended in the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court heard that it was wrong for 10 members who did not form a quorum, because the House of Assembly has quorum. You know, so if you have like a, a river state, it's made up of 31 members, 11 members are supposed to form one third of the membership of the mm. River State House of Assembly. Mm -hmm. And those who sat down to remove, the, to purportedly remove 27 members, there were only four. They didn't form a quorum. And they also sat down to pass the budget. The budget is law. If you look at Section 100 of the, of the Constitution, the appropriation law of River State. So if you look at Section 100, subsection 2, it has prescribed on how a bill to be passed into law. So when four members out of 31 sit down to pass the appropriation law, is that what is contemplated by the Constitution? So, uh, also, so, so, so know, that, that, that would lead me, uh, that, that would lead me to... Another job mm. of our state, who was also removed in a, a venue outside the Oyo State House of Assembly, also by about five or six members 
of the Olympic Act Assembly sat down to impeach uh, Ladojo. And the matter went to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court said no. So I, I, I don't support our political actors are learning. I thought all these precedents will guide members of the Liberal State House Assembly in whatever they are doing. But like they are not learning. That is my my, my problem. <laughs> I think it also has to do with the type of people that we that are, are, are that the political parties nominate to stand election and become as members of the House of Assembly, senators, members of the House of I mean, that, 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 would, oh. that, would, that would bring us to some conversation as to, I mean, so, some will say that when it comes to river state politics, to a very large extent, it's pretty peculiar. What we are seeing right now seems to have happened in the past between, uh, uh, at some point, um, it was uh, Amechi and uh, just the immediate past Governor Wiki. But my question to you right now is this. We are, we are seeing a factional assembly right now where we had a certain group seat and the governor did present the budget to that group. Some said, okay, the faction loyal to the governor. And then we have another uh, faction loyal to the then governor. Now the minister of the FCT who went to Abuja to declare the mandate and, you know, also had uh, their own quote-unquote plenary. Now, where does the law stand in all of this, you know, uh, in terms of yes. decisions made and the governance of the state when it comes to the state house? Yes, I, I, I would say that clearly there's a, a political and constitutional crisis in River State. And we should be very careful. Um, I am thinking of what happened in about 1953 in Western Regional House of Assembly when the House of Assembly broke into factions. They were fighting. When Dr. Nandi Aziki, who was a member of SCSC, is from Eastern Nigeria, he, 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 he would have been the premier of Western and Nigeria. But some people were not happy. And on the day they, they were to elect him, the leader of the party, the largest party in the, in the assembly, a lot of people, members of uh, Action Group and SCSC, they defected into actual group to frustrate uh, Dr. Nandi Azikiwe, and there was crisis in Western uh, Regional Council Assembly. Also, when Dr. Nandi Azikiwe returned to the eastern part of the country, where he comes from, and there was a sitting uh, premier, or they called them leader of government business, Professor Yoita, the leaders of SCNC asked him to resign, mm. to pay way for Z to become a leader of government business in the eastern Nigeria as well assembly. Professor Yoita comes from my part of uh, uh, the Eastern region there, from uh, Akwaibom Crossiva now, President Akwaibom Crossiva. And our leaders were not happy with uh, what uh, the NCNC leaders were trying to do. They said, okay, all, all of them, all the leaders from Ogoja, uh, Calabar, from River State, President River State, Bayasa State, Akwaibom, they all resigned, Emmas from NCNC, to form their party. United Nigeria Independence Party. So also in 1962, there was crisis in Western uh, Regional Council Assembly. This one was when the action group became fragmented. You know, the, the action group was divided. And Akin Tola was the premier. And there was fighting. And uh, then, uh, you know, the, the house broke into several factions. And the federal government had to intervene to declare a state of emergency in the Western region. And then a, 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 a sole administrator was appointed, and Shiva Kinto, who was the premier, was asked to step down. Mm. So we are, are seeing what happened in the Eastern region in 1953, Western region in 1953, and then Western, Eastern region in 1953, and then Western region in 1962. I see that manifesting in River State. Yes. Mm. The House is broken into two factions. The PDP is divided, and that is why 27 members of, uh, of the House Assembly left uh, PDP to join APC. And the members that are with the governor, they are just four, and they cannot sit down and pass a budget. I have explained to you that the budget is a law, and they are procedures prescribed in the Constitution for passage of a bill into law. Mm. So when you pass a, a, a budget, the appropriation law of river states, 
four members passing that law? Is it constitutional? Can four members expel or vacate, ask the seven members to vacate their seats? Can the House of Assembly of River State convey? You know, when you don't have a quorum, the quorum is supposed to be about 11. Uh, so so which, which the, faction, which the, faction the right now, should any decision be made? Which faction would you say has more of the uh, willpower to make things happen? Uh, and it will be within the members, ambit of the law. Mm. So, so, so what does this say about, uh, members, I, I mean, the, the influence are, of the governor, the current governor? Yeah. Yes. Yes. 27 members, I think 27 members will prevail. Any mm. decisions taken by the 27 members, because they are the majority. The decision says uh, the quorum should be ele about 11, and decisions should be resolved by, be, be determined by simple majority. Yeah. They, they, so those 27 members of the House of Assembly, I think they are the authentic. Uh, Okay, I, I, and the additions should prevail. Okay, I, I, I'm going to ask this uh, with, uh, of course, uh, in lieu of uh, the, will I say, request uh, by the PDP that they should declare the seats of those 27 um, members vacant. Now, if we say, okay, for decisions to be made, you know. Yeah, well, I, the, I don't agree with PDP. Okay. Um, arguable. Yeah, it is not. Or the four remaining members can ask the seats of the seven members be vacated because of the fact that section 109 sub 1g of the constitution of the federal republic of nigeria 1999 says if you are a city member you are you defect without Proving that the, your, your party is in crisis, then you have to vacate your seat. But in the case of River State, there is evidence that there is crisis in PDP. Both in River State, you remember G, G, governors, PDP, mm. because I think Abubaka was nominated to be the presidential candidate of PDP in the 2020 election. And all against their candidate, their presidential candidate in P, which is Atika, who, who was Atika Wubaka. They worked against him. So we can, somebody can, someone, someone can argue that there's a crisis at the national level of PDP just to keep you up to speed, we are talking about the recent developments right now in River State, Nigeria, where we understand that uh, three more commissioners have defected uh, just in 20, about tw yeah, 24 hours, uh, making a total of about nine, you know, switching gears. Uh, right now, we'll go on a quick break. When we return, of course, the conversation will continue. Stay with us. This is still the conversation, and of course, we are discussing developing issues at the moment in River State, Nigeria. We are the biggest story, or the biggest development right now in River State has to do with uh, uh, three more commissioners having resigned from the cabinet of the current governor, Simfu Bara. And uh, of course, uh, this development means that a total of about nine commissioners have resigned from Fubara's cabinet within 48 hours. And of course, amidst uh, the political tension in the state. Well, still with us, we have a barista Okoi Obna Obla, of course, APC chieftain and former chairman, a defunct uh, special presidential investigation panel. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Thank you, Dr. All right, great. Now, let's talk about uh, the word or the phrase structure that the former uh, governor of the state, that since Omuke has made reference to countless times has been one of the, what I call it, perceived rift, political rift in the state. What is your take on uh, this particular phrase, uh, political structure, he's been, uh, of course, uh, talking about? Well, all, all Nigerian politicians talk about uh, structure uh, because they, they want to have a system where those who, who believe in them 
those who are faithful to them, you know, are in charge of the structures. The structures is about the political party, okay? And the political parties, you know, are there in wards, in polling units, in all the local government areas. You should have your people in charge of the world executive, local government executive, and the state executive. But, it's, it's, it, but it looks like more, it's, as against political party, it looks more of a personal control. Yes. It, well, it, I, I, I have spoken about the level mm. of our political evolution. We, we, we are still at the nascent level, at the rudimentary level. We are still learning. So because of that, Nigerian politics is all about the person, personification or personality cult, I will call it, I will call it personality cult. The leader is there, the leader is everything, the leader dispenses patronage to everybody from the top to the bottom. So that is the level we are. That is why it, from the, when I was starting, I was talking about political evolution, mm. that we are still in a learning curve because we have practiced democracy for just under 25 years. So we are still very young. And I was saying that tension will always be there, even in advanced democracies like India, like the United States, uh, uh, like the uh, UK. In the United States presently, there's tension in the Republican Party because mm -hmm. Donald Duke and Donald Trump is in control of all the structures. And like, it, that is why everybody is predicting that he would likely emerge the presidential candidate of the Republican Party. It's all about structures. All right, if you I, don't have structures, you can't be there. Uh, because all right. our politics is still personalized. All right, uh, Barista Obono. Like, um, you know, Barista uh, Obono, uh, I, I will get back to you shortly, but uh, just give yes. me a moment. Uh, joining the conversation right now is uh, Mary Oguiji, a uh, human rights activist and also lawyer joining from Abuja. Thank you so much for your time, Mary. Thank you for having me. I'd like to go back to you, Barista Obono. Uh, what do you see as the political future of uh, the current governor? Uh, what do you see happening in the coming days? I mean, we are seeing his cabinet shrinking by, well, I call it by the day right now. Uh, in terms of his political clout, influence, uh, his political uh, future in the state, what, what do you see happening in, in the coming days? Well, if you have to look at his background, where is it coming from? Uh, Governor Fubara was a civil servant. I understand he was a, a counter general of uh, river states. So he, he is not very conversant with politics at the grassroots level. Uh, unfortunately, he became the uh, governorship candidate and he won the election. Uh, I don't see his surviving this onslaught from uh, somebody like Mike, who is very politically shrewd, who has uh, political experience, who has ebullence who is a very fearless person, he is very courageous. I don't see him surviving uh, Governor Wicke's onslaught. And Governor Wicke was governor for eight years. Before then, he was a councillor. He was local government chairman. He was chief of staff to uh, Ameshi. And some people said, oh, there are all the turbulence Ameshi contended with to become governor. Uh, it was Governor Wicke who was the power behind him. Uh, then he became um, a minister, uh, you know, in President Jonathan's government, and then he became governor for eight years. He has been there. He has a lot of experience. He has seen it all. And he has his tentacles everywhere in River States. I don't see Governor Fubara surviving the onslaught of uh, former Governor Wiki. I think he will cave in. His government has had a crumbling. Already, the legislative branch of government has crumbled. The executive branch of government has, is also crumbling. If you have uh, about one third of your commissioners living, living in your cabinet, then you know that you are in trouble. Because all these people cannot be written off. All these people have their tentacles in their villages, in their wards, in their local government areas. They, they have people who listen to them. So they also have um, uh, their tentacles in all the wards both the legislators and the, the former commissioners. 
So if you see all these people leaving you, um, then you are in trouble because it needs to, it will take in time to begin to develop or build a structure. Mm. And he has not been gotten there. He has already having issues. So he has no structure. I don't see him surviving so, uh, from our governor with his structure. I all right, see we're that beginning to see. Okay, great. Now, in River State, we are beginning to also see other statesmen, you know, and also prominent uh, figures trying to sort of intervene and mediate, you know, in uh, what is going on, trying to sort of find the level uh, playing ground for all of the parties involved. We know that uh, ex-governor, that George, actually did uh, address the press. A new central was part of it, where he sued for peace and even suggested that maybe at some point uh, there will be some sort of, uh, what I call it, round table. Uh, between the former governors and, you know, uh, the war, well, I call it uh, uh, tussling parties right now, to sort of find a middle playing ground. Now, uh, what do you think? Do you think um, uh, that at the end of the day, I mean, with their voice to what is going on, how much of an influence do you think this would help um, solve the situation on ground? Well, uh, I, I don't think... Um uh, the, the intervention is good enough. Um, they ought to have in, in intervened in this crisis when it was uh, simmering, but now the crisis has reached this level. Uh, you know, I don't see you know people compromising. People are taking hard lines. They are not going to compromise, and it is a fight to finish. You, you have purportedly spared 27 members of the River State of Assembly. <laughs> I, I know, and you have gone ahead to sit down to pass a budget and without the participation of 27 members. And you have allowed commissioners to resign. So I don't see the intervention of the elders of River State doing anything to change what we have on ground. I remember my friend, the precious uh, Lekemen, Lekemen, who was from River State. He had contested governor before, and uh, he was interviewed by networks some few weeks ago. And he was calling um, on former governors like uh, Ugile, uh, George, uh, yeah, that George, and so forth and so on to intervene. But uh, that was three weeks ago. But now, <laughs> it's a long time. Three weeks from today is a long time. And in politics, one minute, Two minutes can make the difference. Positions have been taken. I don't see that intervention, you know, resulting in anything to take us out of this crisis. The mm. only way to take us out of this crisis, I think, the National Assembly should intervene because there's a particular section 14, section 14 of the Constitution of thereabout of thereof says that if there is a crisis in the states. You know, the National Assembly can take over and begin to function as the House of Assembly of that state. So I think we have reached that stage. We should, we should not allow this um, uh, crisis to continue to escalate. Time has come for the National Assembly to intervene and take over, you know, the River State National Assembly. If they do that, then we can begin to talk about, uh, you know, um, trying to resolve the matter by talking to the political actors to simmer down. Uh, you know, to work with one another and so forth and so on. So if that is not done, I don't see the intervention of the elders of River State resulting in anything that can help us, can help us regulate of this crisis. All right, now let's uh, go back a bit. Uh, be, I mean, the foundation of all of this uh, started when there were, uh, of course, uh, it, it initially started as rumors and uh, it became founded to some extent that uh, the governor, that's the current governor, wanted to be impeached. Uh, and then we've seen all of this, you know, follow-up incidents happen. Do you see that happening again, taking up again? We are, of course, we see uh, maybe the 27 uh, at some point saying, you know what, uh, let's, let's put out the governor. Do they have the, the, the power, the, the strength to actually pull that off? The, the, the Pakistani members have the strength, and that is why the governor of Fubara trying to take some moves that related to prevent them. For instance, uh, demolishing the House of Assembly. That, that was, it's, I don't think it's wrong. He's taking laws, the, the laws into your hands. 
Um, that is why he did that. He doesn't want the 27 members to sit because if they sit, you know, and they have a, a, a conducive environment, a conducive atmosphere, they may likely, you know, uh, try to impeach the, the governor. So, but I see them doing that because, as I said, uh, the other parties are taking hard lines, you know, and they want to get back at uh, Governor Kubara for, you know, taking the budget to four, four members, you know, <laughs> uh, reverse the assembly. And they went ahead to pass their budgets. And that's as, you know, uh, was not well calculated. I, I shouldn't have done that. He should have tried to reach out to the 27 and strange members, but he has done that. It will harden the 27 uh, members, trying to also ask them to vacate their seats. You, you can, they don't have the power to ask them to vacate their seats. Even if they are defected, let them go to court, uh, let the court make that pronouncement. But as members, four, four members house, can they ask 27 members to vacate their seats, even if they are defected from um, APC or from PDP to APC? So all this has made the health environment so toxic, uh, unconducive for anybody who wants to intervene in this crisis. And they will fight to finish. The fight to finish will result in the attempt to impeach Governor Fubara. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, and let's, let's look at it also in terms of the impact this might just have on the, well, I call it political landscape of River State. We know that uh, this is not the first time we are, we are seeing this kind of a squabble uh, between a, a, a current governor and a former governor. But do you think in the coming weeks or in the coming uh, months or political seasons, this might in a way sort of influence maybe policy outcomes or decision making when it comes to governance and administration in the state to avert or avoid scenarios like this? Well, the, the, the scenarios, the worst uh, you know, uh, possible scenario we can see is that the administration of River State coming to a halt. Because I don't think the budget or the appropriation law that has been passed by the four members is constitutional. Some of the members may want to go to court. They may want to, they may want to go to court to contest the legality or the constitutionality of the appropriation law purportedly passed. They may also want to go to court to contest, to contest the legality of four members sitting as a river state as assembly and taking certain decisions, including the budget and also expelling the other 27 members. So all these things will come, come together, take collectively, will result in a sort of political metamorphosis in river state. Um, we are going to see a new realignment of forces in the river state. That will also impact on the next election. Who is going to be the strong man of river state? River state has had two strong men, Rotimi Ameshi, Governor Wike, now Governor Fubara. Who is going to, you know, uh, uh, sway in the face of all what is happening in river state Today. Hmm. Now, let's talk about the person of uh, the former governor, uh, Wike, that uh, uh, governor in some Wike. Uh, we've seen some elder statesmen in the uh, states uh, calling on the federal government to actually sort of caution him, saying uh, that it's just a minister out of about 48 ministers, you know, Nigeria. In terms of his influence in the state, being an ex minister, still trying to, you know, call the shorts. And at you know, in the process, trample on toes. Some have said that look, is overdoing it to some extent. I, do do you share that opinion too? I, I don't agree with that. Uh, 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 Wick is a politician. Every politician wants to be relevant. I don't think in the struggle for relevance. Well, don't you think that there are boundaries to this thing? If not for anything, for for anything. the sake of legacy and the smooth governance of the state. Because if we are to look at it objectively, with this crisis happening, uh, governance and administration, you know, has been put on halt, right? So um, at the end of the day, it's not in the interest of the state. So, I mean, I, I just want to know your take. Do you think that there are, there are boundaries to these things? Or do you think the former governor is overstepping 
you know, some, some of those boundaries. I, 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 don't, I wouldn't want to con, con, condemn him. I, I, I have told you it is all politics, the dynamics of politics. Everybody has to align itself with the new dynamics in River State. And it, politicians are very calculating people. They are very shrewd people. So I expect the governor of Ubarra to align itself the reality. The reality is that I have told you, Wiki is a very experienced politician. He has been there for the past 24 years. He has been a councillor. He has been a local government chairman. He has been chief of staff. He has been a minister of state. He has been governor for eight years. So you don't, you cannot wish, uh, you know, uh, Wiki away. He's not dead. He's still alive. He's still young. He's just uh, 56 years. He has many years to play politics. And uh, okay. except I, I, you, I'm sorry, you ba Barrister Obna Obla. Okay, I'm sorry, I might just need to interrupt you slightly. We have uh, our yeah. correspondent on ground in River State. I'll come back to you, who, of course, yeah. wants to keep us up to speed with the latest development there. Neo Muni, thank you so much for your time. Mary. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, we, of course, uh, do not have our correspondent. It's Mary uh, Oguiji. Mary, thank you so much for joining in. Thank you for having me. All right. Uh, I mean, just quickly, what's your take on some of the of uh, the recent developments in River State? Okay. Firstly, as a constitutional and human rights lawyer, my concern is basically with the people because whether we like it or not, democracy is about the people. It's not about individual interest. But with what is going on in River State, one would think that. River State is a personal is a personal property of maybe a particular person or some set of persons with the way things are going, which is not fair on the people. For example, the governor is under a lot of stress, and as you can see, there's already um, demolition of um, the um, state house of assembly, and because of this stress, a lot of persons, although the governor has not come out openly to say that he is the person that actually authorized the demolition, but obviously that kind of that kind of demolition cannot happen without the governor being aware of it. Okay, obviously, uh, that kind of demolition cannot happen without the governor being aware of it. Can you hear me? Yes, very well. Please go ahead. Mary, please go ahead. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, of course, uh, I guess we have lost connection with Mary there. Uh, we, of course, are still talking about developing issues in River State, Nigeria. And we have with us, uh, of course, a barrister Okoye Obna Obla, APC chieftain and former chairman, a defunct a special uh, presidential investigation panel. And, of course, uh, you just had a while ago the voice of uh, Mary Oguiji, human rights activist and lawyer from Abuja. Uh, I'd like to go back to you, Barista uh, Obna Obla. Now, quickly, uh, what do you see? Uh, do you see the intervention of the, let's say, the president, for instance, uh, in any way softening uh, the issues on ground? Well, I, I, I don't see how um, the president can intervene. We, we must recognize that Nigeria is a federation of 36 states. All these states are independent and autonomous. They don't take orders from Abuja. So we must appreciate that point. And I have told you, it's all about politics. Politics is like that. What is happening is not unusual. If you are saying that uh, the interests of the people should be taken into account, are you saying that uh, Wiki has no supporters? He has supporters. He has supporters. And the supporters are the people of River State. So what? should happen is that Fubara and the other side, they should try to, you know, see, look for a meeting point between them and Wiki, you know, so if you can't, you can't, I told you, you cannot push Wiki away. He has been around, he's strong, and we have to appreciate that fact. And uh, so anything that you want to do in River State, you have to discuss with him, as far as politics is, 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 is all about the people. So you have to talk with him. Um, I don't see the federal government intervening. This thing has nothing to do with law. It has nothing to do with uh, whatsoever. It has to do with politics. Politics is dynamic. Politics is all about the people who get what, when, and how. The, 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 the resources in society are scarce. 
and then the politics try to uh, portion or allocate these scarce, scarce resources to everybody so that everybody will have a sense of uh, uh, belonging. So, so everybody will have something to hold on to. And uh, what we see, what we are seeing is this political struggle between the different stakeholders and actors on how the uh, wealth of River State should be apportioned to everybody, to all the interest groups, to all the local government areas, to all the wards, and so forth and so on. So it is normal, it is not unusual, as long as they don't disrupt law and order. But I have said the most appropriate body to intervene now is the National Assembly, because uh, if you look at uh, uh, the Constitution, the Constitution has vested the powers on the National Assembly to take over the running of any state that has the kind of crisis we are seeing in River State. That was introduced in 1970, during the 1979 Constitution and 1999 Constitution. That provision was not in the 1963 Constitution, and that is why we had the Western crisis. The federal government, the, the way the federal government intervened was to pass a motion in the federal, federal parliament, declare the civil emergency in Western Nigeria. But now we have this provision in the Constitution. The National Assembly to intervene to take over the running of River State without removing the governor and deputy governor. And mm -hmm. during that period, the National Assembly is running the affairs of River State. We can use that period to bring all the actors, all the stakeholders, all the agreed parties together. Then the president can intervene and the president can now begin to talk to all the political actors, all the political stakeholders for peace to reign for a compromise. And which is not, you know, out of the way, because politics is all about disagreement and compromising, making concessions mm. here and there. Every politician to know the act of conceding. But, but, so but, sometimes you have to concede, okay. sometimes you have to hold on to a position and use that position to bargain. Okay, so I, I, that is I mean, be, because... See. Because we're pressed for time, I, I mean, I understand Mary's back. I would like to also know uh, Mary's take uh, on uh, the future of the political future of the governor, seeing that, of course, uh, his cabinet is sort of shrinking by the day. What, what do you see becoming of the political future in terms of influence and clout of the current governor of River State, Fubara? It's actually the political future of the current governor of River State is actually dicey. It's um, a pretty, how I put it, it's um, something that is really unpredictable to an extent. But if we are to go by the rule of law, the people put him there. Because we can't say that 27 members of the House of Assembly are wiser than the thousands of people that voted for the governor to be the governor today. So if we are to go by the rule of law, strictly by the rule of law, I think he has good chances because he was picked by the people. And if he was actually picked by the people based on their love for him or based on, um, based on the fact that they believe that he can do something to actually make um, the state be a better place for everyone, then definitely he can still move on. But the problem now is the 27 members. How would they really affect him? Because every decision that needs to be taken with their wanted to third majority that is needed to take some decisions, one third needed to take some decisions, is really going to affect him in a way. But notwithstanding, that's the reason why we have um, some political onlookers thinking that the reason for the demolition of the National Assembly is because he wants to actually take charge. Because, for example, if they are using the government house as the new place where decisions should be made, there will be restrictions to an extent, some persons that will be allowed in. What if those kind of things happen? It actually puts the democracy of the state of the state in a very dicey situation. More than my fears for the governor, I actually fear for the people because I'm wondering what their fate is right now. Because the concentration of the governor is not really would not really be on the stage right now, but it's more like the concentration of the governor is on making sure that his seat it, it, his seat is even secure first. And that's the reason why we actually do not that that's the reason why the constitution actually gives um actually allows um gives um what they call it i, I, I can't actually remember the word right now but that's why in some cases 
we don't it, some the government does not actually go through some kind of cases because the um, the constitution allows them so that they can have time to concentrate on the states but right now the governor's seat is actually more like on fire so the governor is not giving the kind of attention that is needed okay. to be given to the states to the state as it is so my uh, my problem or will i say my um my problem or my concern is for the people of the states the people that own democracy the people that own government the people that own power what's 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 their what, what is it in what is in all this for them when would the states be stable for the government to be able to do what it takes for the states to be a better place for everybody because I mean, people are suffering with it that seems to be the big question you know on the uh, lips of virtually everyone uh, following this particular development. But uh, I'd like to say a big thank you. I'm Mary Ogwiji, human rights activist and lawyer from Abuja, and also Barista Okoye Obna Obla, APC chieftain and former chairman, defunct special presidential investigation panel. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. And of course, that's a wrap on the show today. My name is Dakbo Adigboye. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.